the Russian space agency Roscosmos has unveiled plans to develop the Amur, a reusable rocket that looks eerily similar to SpaceX's Falcon 9. Russian partner, Russia space agency. They are trying to catch up with SpaceX. After becoming the first to launch into space and successfully return to Earth, SpaceX used Falcon 9 to cement its position in the spaceflight sector. Now, Roscosmos, Russia's official space agency, has announced ambitions to construct a reusable, methane-powered rocket akin to the Falcon 9. Welcome to TechBang, and in today's video, we shall be looking at how Russia is copying SpaceX and Elon Musk's Falcon 9 by creating the Amur LNG-powered rocket. Considered Russia's first reusable gasoline-powered rocket, the Amur is a two-stage medium-class carrier launch vehicle. The Russian space agency intends to launch the Amur rocket several times and reuse them after their return to Earth using the vertical landing system that is quite similar to the landing technology of the Falcon 9. The director of science at Roscosmos has compared the reliability of the Russian-made rocket to that of an AK-47. As mentioned before, there are some striking similarities between Amur and SpaceX's Falcon 9. The best example of this is the design and functionality of the landing technology. The lattice control fins mounted close to the top of the Amur are also a feature of SpaceX's Falcon 9. Another striking similarity between the Falcon 9 and the Amur rocket are the landing fins at the bottom of the rocket. These similarities have made many people consider the Amur a direct copycat of the Falcon 9. Despite the similarities between the two rockets, both still have contrasting features in their structure, specifications, and general cost that it would take to build each rocket. The Amur is a much smaller rocket compared to the Falcon 9. The Russian-built spacecraft stands at the height of 180 feet, which is easily dwarfed by the Falcon 9 which stands at the height of 208 feet. Both space exploration crafts also differ when it comes to how much payload they can carry at once. The LNG-powered rocket carries a payload of 11.9 tons, which is much smaller than the 25.1 tons that the American-made rocket can carry. Of course, no comparison between rockets is complete without talking about the boosters. The booster stage of the Amur has five RD-0169A methane-oxygen engines. However, even in this category, the Falcon 9 still outclasses the Amur with its nine liquid and kerosene Merlin engines. The Amur rocket has not yet been built, and it's still in its design phase, which means its launch into space might be a bit far off. The Amur will launch in the year 2026. Also, another area that both reusable rockets differ is the amount of money it would take to build them. We have already established that the Falcon 9 is a much larger rocket in almost every aspect, and the cost of building is no different. The estimated cost of an Amur is about 17 million euros, while on the other hand, it costs about 38 million euros. The CEO of SpaceX, Elon Musk, took the news of the alleged copycat design of the Roscosmos' LNG-powered rocket. In fact, he actually endorsed the plan for the Amur. Elon Musk even went as far as to drop some advice for the Russian spacecraft makers via Twitter. Elon advised that the rocket should be larger than they intend to build it because it would be more cost-effective when it comes down to the economics of scale, which could greatly benefit everyone in the niche market. Commenting on the Amur rocket on Twitter, SpaceX founder Elon Musk said, It's a step in the right direction, but they should really aim for full reusability by 2026. A larger rocket would also make sense for literal economies of scale. The goal should be to minimize cost per useful ton to orbit, or it will at best serve as a niche market. The creation of the Amur will usher out the era of Soyuz 2.1V spaceships, which is the type of rocket you will find in use in Russia, and in case you are eager to see, the launch of Amur is set to take place at the Cosmodrome spaceport in far eastern Russia. The new methane oxygen engine in the Amur is programmed to run thrice in an entire flight cycle. The first time the methane oxygen engine of the Amur more will be used will be when it takes off into space. The second time is when the spaceship is in the heavier and thicker part of the atmosphere. The third stage will happen when the spacecraft has to land. The boosters working together with SpaceX-inspired landing technology will ensure that the Amur has a smooth and soft landing at the designated landing spot. So, what exactly is Roscosmos, and how are they working with NASA to further the advancement of space exploration? Following the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, 
Roscosmos arose from the Soviet space program that began in the 1950s. It was founded on February 25, 1992 as the Russian Space Agency and was reformed in 1999 and 2004 as the Russian Aviation and Space Agency and the Federal Space Agency, respectively. To renationalize the Russian space sector, the Federal Space Agency was united with the United Rocket and Space Business, a government corporation, in 2015, resulting in Roscosmos in its present state. Roscosmos is one of the International Space Station's partners. It provided the core space modules Zarya and Zvedya, which were both launched by Proton rockets and later joined by NASA's Unity module. Roscosmos is also in charge of expedition crew launches aboard Soyuz TMA spacecraft and Progress space transporter resupply missions to the International Space Station. After the initial ISS contract with NASA expired, Roscosmos and NASA signed a space contract that runs until 2020 under which Roscosmos will sell NASA spots on Soyuz spacecraft for approximately $21 million each way, thus $42 million to and from the ISS per person, and provide Progress transport flights $50 million per Progress as outlined in the Exploration Systems Architecture Study. Beginning in 2008, Roscosmos has indicated that crewed Soyuz flights will be doubled to four per year, while Progress flights will be doubled to eight per year. Through the Space Adventures Organization, Roscosmos has also given space tourism to fair-paying guests to the International Space Station. Six space tourists have flown into orbit with Roscosmos as of 2009, each for an estimated price of at least $20 million. Until now, SpaceX has been the only business with a fleet of reusable rockets, and despite the fact that Blue Origin, commanded by Jeff Bezos, appears to be catching up with their new Shepard boosters, SpaceX remains the leader in the space race, so it's good to see other agencies deeply involved in advancing space technology. That's it for today's video. Let us know down in the comments section if you think Roscosmos copied SpaceX's Falcon 9. If they did, will they be able to replicate the quality that Elon Musk put into the Falcon 9? Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to TechBang if you are not already subscribed. Stay safe and we will see you in the next video.